All right, y'all, I've been uh, making some progress on this, one of my latest projects here. Um, started this about a few weeks ago. I put the little link so you can see the introductory video of this project, but we're making way and um, it's still been very dry and we're patiently waiting for the rain, but until then, uh, I've been taking advantage of the dry dry days to, to, to finish up, get all the organic matter on the ground and prep all the beds. Um, so I just wanted to do a little uh, walk around so you can see the design. All my designs are just off the cuff. I don't really, I'm not good with, I don't know if I'm not good. I just, I just it's not my style. I guess I'm sure I can learn. Um, but I really like just getting my hands dirty with the land and s interacting. It's like bouncing back ideas off of nature, you know. Um, I don't, I don't, I just can't see myself like being on the computer or like a piece of paper and like trying to design something. I don't know. Maybe it's just the way my brain works, but either way. Um, so I kind of just been making beds willy nilly in a somewhat sort of a sim simplistic, but also not so simplistic pattern where it's just purely straight lines. So it comes around here. We've got a lot of biomass on the ground. I uh, did a little bit of pruning of the early facacias, but I'm trying to keep, you know, I'm not trying to waste any time on, on like trying to prune all these trees back and make sure that, you know, everything is super centropic. You know, we have to kind of just get <clears throat> what we can done. So the first priority is to get all the organic matter and prep all the beds. So you can see kind of how I've been doing it. Just make, make a kind of make windrows pretty much uh, and fill in the organic matter um all around including the walkways the walkways are so so important to these systems i feel like a lot of people um overlook the importance of the walkways uh, and something i repeat all the time is you know don't forget about your walkways because you can pack in so much organic matter in your walkways you sh might as well um because in a you know in one rainy season here in Florida that will be you know underneath will be black soil so um, you can you can like slowly creep these beds out over time and they can get wider and wider as this decomposes and becomes soil especially if you do sort of like inline uh, composting which is something also I recommend especially during the, the rainy season instead of like having a compost pile somewhere else and waiting for it to decompose and then bring it in this sort of allows you to compost in your walkways. Um, so I'm a big proponent of going crazy hard with your walkways in terms of organic matter. It's just this giant sponge that will pay, you know, the return on investment on that is is amazing. Um, but yeah, that's this has been the sort of, uh, been the routine, filling, uh, making, laying out the beds, and then bringing that organic matter, big time organic matter, um, because this area desperately needs it. Most areas in Florida desperately need organic matter, but you can see sort of a, it's a bit of a triangular, circular-ish shape um, with some lines in the middle. Um, it'll allow us to uh, to come in with certain species. Like, I kind of like, I kind of crisscrossed on this one, which is nice because I'm able to put, um, so the west is over there, as you can see the sun. Um, so I can sort of put a species here to help block that western sun for everything else in there. And then the more shade loving stuff, I can put more on the eastern side. Um, or maybe here, I, I like coming to sites on different parts of the day so that I see where the sun is um, at all parts of the day. Um, this early vacation will provide some some benefit uh, for the western sun so maybe a nice little uh, an apier grass hedge or Mexican sunflower hedge right here to help protect these beds so it, that's sort of how my brain works I kind of just lay everything out and then design elements start to come in to my head as I'm working. Um, this star fruit still isn't looking that great. I should mulch around that and give it a helping hand. The client had planted these before I arrived. I did prune back this catli guava 
and it's coming back very beautifully. You can see, um, kind of incorporated some of the some of the plants that are already here. Um, again, we've had here's another star fruit looking decent. Um, not looking that decent actually, but hopefully it'll it'll perk up during the rains. And I'm surprised these trees are still kicking, to be honest. I'm sure they uh, low quad. I'm sure they have a. Uh, have been liking this little bit of mulch around them, even though it hasn't really rained much. These bananas, um, most likely going to move, or I'm gonna finish off with like one or t one bed here, or I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do there. But um, while I have the time right now, I kind of want to show other aspects of this property. Here's a Barbados cherry. Um, our mulch pile is a. Uh, We've been putting in some work in that mulch pile. So this is the other section that the client wants to work on as well. And we just started chipping, uh, st just started working on this area. Um, so kind of the client told me that uh, last rainy season, um, it got flooded out here and he freaked out and he like quickly made like a berm. So you can kind of see that there's like a berm already made. So we kind of just um, followed the uh, pattern of the berm and, I kind of taught him how I make my beds, so he's been helping make beds as well, um, which is fun. This is that's my favorite part is spreading the knowledge and spreading the loves, and making it a collaborative effort, and not just me doing all the work, you know. So, because um, at the end of the day, that's what we want. We want more people to get into this, more people learning, more people understanding that uh, we need to regenerate this very fragile uh, South Florida ecosystem um because we're up against some major forces but i digress um this jackfruit actually survived so we're designing around the jackfruit as well so same sort of deal we're gonna probably have like a little um circular ish shape here um and maybe if we have time incorporate something in the middle i'm not sure yet this is a fresh freshly freshly started so kind of wrapping our heads around what we want to do here um but yeah i'm really stoked to see that this jackfruit survived because it really goes to show how much of a microclimate these early focaceas are providing i mean i say this hundreds of times but early focaceas are one of my favorite trees here in this in this eco in the south florida sort of uh scrubby ecosystem they provide so much biomass and grow in straight sand. They don't give a damn about flooding. They don't give a damn about uh, drought. You know, the young trees maybe will get knocked back by frost, but they just don't care. And part of the reason why they're so invasive, but we all know agroforesters love invasive species because we utilize them and we respect them. And they're such amazing allies and tools for land regeneration. So as per usual, my gratitude goes out to the early facacious. Um, but here's some other elements that I want to show. Nice little uh, Jamaican cherry. And then this area is sort of like, a, I'm not sure what kind of, some trees have been planted. Another one, beautiful flower. Um, an Inga ice cream bean, uh, which also survived the frost last year. It wasn't a horrible frost, but again, the um, the microclimate here is way better than anything than I have. So super cool to see that microclimates are actually working. A lot of just random Nopalas that the clients has been plugging in. Here's a Noni, looks like it's gonna flower oh yeah and i love fruit on there already um and and yeah that's it but progress has oh look at that swallowtail kite ah oh, dang it there's a lot out here there it is a lot of bugs too you could probably hear it on the camera um it's cool this is this is a really cool property 
way, way, way less residential than mine. Uh, I, I absolutely love coming out here just to, just for the vibes, honestly. Um, kind of, sometimes I gotta, oh, here's a peanut butter fruit as well. So cool, all these things that he planted are surviving. I'm sure with a little TLC, they're gonna thrive. Some more bananas. Um, yeah, this is the part of agroforestry work that I love. I love being in environments like this. This is what really feeds my soul. Um, so that's the progress. We're slowly but surely getting there, waiting for, waiting for the rains. Gonna soak it all up with all this organic matter. Um, Next comes the topsoil and the finalizing of the bed making. And then of course, uh, seed planting. Then uh, the client has like a lot of bigger potted trees as well. So we're gonna plop those in as well as, um, as rains start. So that's it for now.